Good morning. Good morning. Hold up, please. There we go. Um, thank you. <laughs> Would like to call the South Sound 911 Board of Directors meeting for April 17th, 2024 to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Board Member Bushnell. Excused. Yes. Yep, just walked in. Oh, present. He's on the roof. He's on the roof. <laughs> I couldn't see behind our guest. <laughs> board member Casebolt. Uh, board member Dammeyer. Excused. Board member Denson. Board member Hayden. Here. Board member Holm. Board member Holsey. Excused. Board member Laricella. Vice Chair McGilligan. Here. Oh, board member Rumba. And Chair Door. Present. Thank you. Okay. Were there any public comments received? No public comments received. Okay. And is there anybody that signed up? I don't have any slips. No okay. one signed up today. Anyone in the audience want to make public comment? Okay. We will close public comment. We have a special guest with this before I go to approval agenda. We, the board talked about Emory, the emergency penguin last week or last board meeting. And so Emory has joined us. I want to turn this over to Pat Fisher. Pat was our first South Sound 911 volunteer and he works with our community relations team and he goes out with Emory. So I'm going to turn it over to Pat for a few moments and let him talk about what he does. Good morning, everyone. This is Emory. We've spent many hours together. We, uh, we attend many of the, the community events and, and those kinds of things. You know, I, I just have to say, you've got to be careful that you don't get stampeded when you get around little kids. It's, it's just a track. But, um, these events with Emory, I want to point out the, uh, the bags that we've got here that um, are some kind of sampling of some of the things that we hand out to the kids. So we play a lot of games at these. We have, you know, usually a table, and, and the kids will come filing by. And we play a lot of a lot of games with the objective of teaching them about nine one one, how to deal with with an emergency, what things to do and not to do. And one of the questions that I often ask is, if you walk in your front door and you see a, a fire, what do you do? Well, they'll always say, call nine one one. But what if it's in the fireplace? And then it, then they'll start thinking. You know, those kinds of questions are the things that we ask. I have to tell you also that one of the things that amazed me after doing, I don't know, it's been a couple of years now for these events, is how many kids from, you know, up through age eight or nine, 10 years old, don't know their address when you ask them. And so that's one of the things that we, we focus a lot of uh, teaching, but in a really fun way, we have a lot of games that, Amazingly enough, they always win. <laughs> and, and then we give them the sampling of the, some of the toys that we've got in here that we give them. So um, it's a lot of fun, you know. One of those things that, uh, I don't know, keeps me out of the bars, you know. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're. Pardon? Do you go to school? Yeah. Depends on your area. Available. I think that some of the people in the communication department could set up something like that if they're interested. Any I, other? I go wherever they tell me. <laughs> Any questions for Pat or Emery? Okay, <laughs> we're going to take a brief pause and take a picture. The board will take a picture with Emery, and we would like to invite the Chiefs if they would also like to get a picture with Emery. <laughs> so we're going to go over here on this blank wall quickly. Yeah, put it on Twitter. 
Sunday morning we woke up. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys uh are you going to uh Shalan? Yes. Okay. <laughs> What shoe speeding is coming is coming up? Okay, so um, we'll come back to order. Thank you to Pat and Emery. You guys, and I have to say, I've seen the communications team and Emery out in the public, and they do a fantastic job. They were just at Central Pierce. Um, Emery wasn't there, but the uh, the why am I drawing a blank? Community relations team was out there, and it's so much fun to see people interact with them. So it was great. So I appreciate that team and thanks for having a little, having them here. So now we'll move on to approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion? So moved. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Agenda is approved. Will the clerk please read the consent agenda? Item number one, approval of the minutes of March 20th, 2024 Board of Directors meeting. Item number two, motion 2024-14 to authorize approval of the 2024 Washington State Patrol access user fees in an amount not to exceed $72,000. Item number three, motion 2024-15 to authorize South Sound 911 to fulfill the reimbursement request of $69,170 for an emergency notification system submitted by the cities and towns of Tacoma, Lakewood, Puyallup, University Place, Bonnie Lake, Sumner, Ording, Stillicum, Buckley, Carbonado, and Wilkeson. Item number four, motion 2024-16 to authorize South Sound 911 to fulfill the reimbursement request of $320,000 for the city of Puyallup radio system improvements. And item number five, motion 2024-17 to authorize approval of the annual Microsoft Enterprise Agreement through the Microsoft affiliate SHI International Corporation in an amount not to exceed $176,100 plus any applicable taxes. Hey, is there any item on the consent agenda a member would like pulled for discussion? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, second. It's been moved and seconded that the consent agenda be approved as written. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the consent agenda is approved. Where is my proclamation. Well, I didn't, this is my, where's my proclamation? Not under pink. <laughs> Sorry, please bear with me.
Okay. So next week is Administrative Professionals Week, and we have some fantastic people to recognize. Um, we have Marlena and Jamie that take really good care of this board and make things happen seamlessly. We also have a fantastic finance department, HR department, just the admin staff as a whole. And so I would like to recognize them. Um, and we have a proclamation to read. A proclamation of the South Sound 911 Board of Directors declaring April 24th, 2024 as Administrative Professionals Day and May 8th as Facilities Management Day. Whereas April 24th, 2024 has been designated as Administrative Professionals Day and May 8th, 2024 has been de designated as Facilities Management Day. Whereas our administrative and facilities management professionals play a vital role in the operations of the communications center. And whereas the work of these professionals is built on special, specialized knowledge in many different areas, while also managing unforeseen issues as they arise throughout the organization. And whereas administrative professionals are valued ambassadors and often the liaison between the organization and its partner agencies and elected officials. And whereas our facilities management professionals work diligently to maintain the safety and environment of the communication center. And whereas by exhibiting professionalism and courtesy, the South Sound 911 administrative and facilities management professionals demonstrate the core values and cultivate an environment ideal for productivity and growth. Be it proclaimed by the South Sound 911 Board of Directors, April 24th, 2024, as Administrative Professionals Day, and May 8th, 2024, as Facilities Management Day, in honor of the men and women who support the mission and operations of the Administrative and Facilities Management Division of South Sound 911. Adopted this 17th day of April, 2024. I also want to recognize Adam, is Adam with this? So Adam and Antonio are our facilities, um, st or not, are, they're the facility staff here. And while we don't actually, I don't see you, I have heard good things about you and I know that you do a great job and we want to, you to also know that you're very much appreciated. So thank you. Um, and as you know, like I said, Marlene and Jamie take care of us, finance. I don't know. We just have a great staff and they're always available. That's the thing. They pick up their phone. They're available. They do an amazing job. So with that, we will move on. Okay. Wow. I can't do it. You can say something. Go ahead, Sarah. Oh, okay. I just want to say that um, a lot of times if you haven't been in a support position before, you don't understand how integral that job is to an organization running smoothly. And I have done lots of support jobs and worked first. I mean, I just feel like those are the people we should show the utmost respect to. And I so appreciate all of them because I don't think we could do these jobs without them. And so I just, I'm not going to like, just let be some proclamation. It's like, we should be just like, oh my gosh, thank you so much that there's coffee at a meeting that you have all these pages always. If I call or I email, somebody gets right back to me. If the calendar is wrong, they fix it. It's just, thank you so much for making us a functional organization because these are the things that are little but matter and make big differences to the public and the community. So thank you so much. Anyone else? Okay, thank you again. Um, all right, moving on to committee and other reports. The radio system providers update. They, the representatives for the radio system were not available to be with us today. The update is that there is going to be a meeting in the city of Puyallup. They're hosting um, April 30th. So there's not been a meeting since there isn't anything to report other than a meeting is scheduled. And then moving on to finance committee, board member Rumba. So this is the fun part is finance. <laughs> I told you we were going to have fun with finance. Um, the I just want to give you a brief recap. I also want you to know that there that in your packet, you'll find the South Sound 911 budget recap 
and the financial report for 2024. You should take a look at those and see if you have any questions on those. Um, Janet is here to answer more specific questions because I would not have the specifics, but I, I find it interesting just to have it um, as I'm doing this job, I understand more of how the information is shown. And I really appreciate how we're showing how much of the allocation is coming in and how much Pierce County is taking off every month. So that's been very helpful for me as a board member to understand. Um, the first thing you should know is that they picked me as the finance chair. Like, I don't know, but they did. And thank you so much for trusting me uh, to, to be the person who gives these reports. And anyone else who wants this job can like apply next year. So <laughs> it's a yearly position. Uh, so just some things that you should know about, um, they were, they did, the staff did, um, present the, the draft 2025 budget calendar and the committee discussed key dates such as we should all know that the deadline for reimbursement requests is May 1st. And so everybody should have gotten information about that. Um, the PSCOC, which I will never remember that it's the public safety communications operation committee. Cause that's so long. Uh, we'll be discussing the 2025 budget at their April meeting. I don't, when is the April meeting? Did they have it already or not? Okay. Last yes, week. So, last Friday. Okay. So I don't... actually should say that they did discuss the 2025 draft budget. Was there any, like any feedback? Good, bad? We have the PSCOC report coming up. Okay, great. That's super. Okay, great. Uh, then the community reviewed current allocation formulas and the reserve balances that we have available for the 2025 budget. Other things that you should know about are the records management system. The RMS capital replacement project is being um, previewed by the board of directors in April. And then a memorandum uh, MOU with the city of Puyallup is on the April consent agenda for approval. That happened already, right? Because we approved the consent agenda. The reimbursement request was for $320,000 for radio infrastructure, and it was approved as part of the 2024 budget. Are there any questions? Janet doesn't need to come up here and look through anything. I wanted to put her on the spot, but no? Okay. Daniel is not here to go through and get grilled, so I thought maybe Janet wanted to, but all right. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Well, on that note, talking about getting grilled, peace. Chief Pete Fisher is here with the PSCOC report. You have an opportunity. Good morning, Chair Door, members of the board. Uh, last Friday, we had our PSCOC meeting. Uh, we received an update from Director Grady on the 988 program. Uh, currently, there are three people in training, and they are anticipated to be operational by May. Um, we were also advised that the FCC is in the rulemaking process to geolocate 988 calls. Uh, we got an update on staffing, which is very positive, so that is good to hear. And then we talked about uh, budget requests are due for reimbursement May 1st, and we'll be covering those in the June PSCOC meeting. And then we had a detailed report from Deputy Director Hamill on the RMS project and the replacement schedule, as well as the budget impacts. And then shortly after that meeting, we did receive our, our estimated allotment. Um, so each of us have that information now, and I'm thinking we'll have a discussion Thursday at our chief's meeting regarding that um, topic. And then we also discussed uh, potential CAD replacement and the difference of cost for that, there will be no impact on our allotments as police departments, um, as that is covered under um, the Prop 1 money or the E91 money. And then uh, additionally, it looks like tentatively, we're planning for an August 7th budget workshop. So I think we're planning to be there and clearing our schedules. And then Jamie did a great job doing our survey results uh, debrief to the chiefs. And with that, that concludes my report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for chief? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to staff reports, we have executive director briefing. Good morning, everyone. My report starts on page 33. Chief Fisher did a good job of giving you a summary of some of the things that were reflected in both reports, PSCOC and yours. If anyone has questions on the 988 update, there were a couple of items that we wanted to just make sure you were aware of the staffing increase as well. Don't know if you had the opportunity to watch the Northwest Now segment that they published in conjunction with a report out on nationwide suicide call numbers. They came and interviewed our staff and the Volunteer of America staff. So it was a good opportunity for us to also talk about 988 and 911 co-location. On page 34 of my report, 
We have included a snapshot of a survey result that East Pierce Fire and Rescue sends out to the community members that have received East Pierce Fire and Rescue services. Everything starts with the 911 call. So we have captured in there the most recent report that their survey uh, document and instrument reflects how South Sound performed. Uh, Vice Chair McElligot brought this information up at our last board meeting. Thank you very much. When we reviewed it, we were very pleased to see that the performance that's reflected in East Pierce's document shows that our agency is performing above the national uh, database standards. So that's really good for us. Chief has committed, Chief Parkinson, that he's going to go back and find maybe a report from a few years ago so we can see how we've made improvements or compared over time uh, to this number. As Chief Fisher mentioned on page 35, there's a table that just reflects for you current budgeted to actual and then operational staffing. We track staffing at the operational level, which for us means those that are independently able to work and have completed training and are filling positions. While we're doing really uh, a good job on the having people here actual to budget, we still have a significant number of employees in training. So we expect our operational percentage to get better as those people get released and deployed to shifts. But a uh, really good reflection of the work, as you all know, we've made uh, staffing an uh, initiative as a priority for the agency. And we're very pleased to, to, to share this with all of you. In addition to the full-time budgeted FTEs that we have, we also have a few part-time employees that help cover shifts. Those numbers are not included in the full-time employee count. Also on page 35, uh, my favorite segment to share with all of you each month is the Heroes Wear Headsets. We have two examples of our employees doing a really amazing job connecting callers to help. The first is a relatively new telecommunicator, Miguel Garcia. He received a call from a security guard that was being assaulted by an individual, and she fortunately was able to retreat to her vehicle and make a 911 call. Later, the uh, agency that uh, she worked for posted a social media a blurb just thanking us and the responders for being there in, in their time of need. So he was able to stay on the phone and anytime our call takers make that connection with the caller and remain on the phone to help them, the call has a really good outcome for the, for the caller. And the way the caller feels reassured that help is on the way. The second call of, is a medical aid telecommunicator, Jessica Stickle. She received one of those remote hiking calls where somebody got injured a couple miles off a paved road, and those take a long time just to get uh, first responders there to assist. But she remained on the phone also for the entire time providing information to the caller who was providing aid to the hiker that had fallen and needed medical assistance. During that call, she also had the opportunity to provide some 911 education to the caller by telling him if the call disconnected because of their location to if, if he couldn't get reconnected by voice to try text to 911 as the text data piece of getting into 911 will sometimes work when a voice call will not. So, so that was good. And we appreciate both of these employees joining our team, being heroes, wear headsets. They do make a difference each and every day that they pick up a 911 call. As uh, at our last board meeting, Chair Dorr also read a proclamation for April being records month. This week is National Telecommunicators Week. And so it's really important that we continue to report out on the good work that our employees do. Our community relations team went and met with some of the agencies and on our Facebook and social media posts, you can see some of the partner agency representatives thanking the call takers and the dispatchers for the job that they do. Lastly, on page 36 of your report, as has been uh, mentioned, Deputy Director Hamill will be previewing an RMS contract with you uh, for approval uh, at the May or June board meeting, depending upon when we get the uh, recommendation from the law enforcement chiefs that, uh, to share with this board. We will be providing another update for them and of materials that has already gone out at the 
police chiefs meeting this Thursday. And then as has been mentioned, typically we set the first Wednesday of August as the workshop for the finance committee to roll out the budget, the, the next year's budget to the board. That would be Wednesday, August the 7th. However, at our next finance committee meeting, we wanna make sure that that date works for all the finance committee members. And um, after that, then we'll be uh, sending out a calendar invite for everybody. So you have that day locked on your calendar. And at our last board meeting, board member Rumba asked about community relation and 911 events that were going on in the community. So if any of you had interest in knowing what in your specific area was going on, you could see and perhaps attend and uh, ha give another hug or, or high five to Emery if he's if he's there. So you'll see, we'll keep track of those in our board report for you so that you can know when things are happening in your area and when South Sound is participating with your agencies. I am happy to take any questions if anyone has questions for me. Board member Rumble. Hi, Debbie. Thank you so much for um, including those uh, community relation events. That's super. Um, I just, I, I think like, it looks like 911 calls are down. Like there's less, call is that right? Am I wrong? I mean, I was, yesterday the Tacoma Police Department was um, giving their update on violent crime. And when they were showing their data, it was down for the last quarter. So I went and looked on our stuff and it looked like it was down. So I just was wondering if that's the case or am I reading it incorrectly? So from a 911 call answering perspective, the calls are reflected every month in your board packet. Yeah. This month it's on page 41 mm -hmm. and we have our call volume listed for March there mm -hmm. that you can see. It's a little bit above the call volume for February and doesn't track that much lower than what we've seen already from December the last couple of months. So it's a little bit less than what we saw in January, however, above uh, above February. But it's not we like July of 2023. No, but the, remember but the summer July is our the, busiest yeah. time okay. of the year and then July 4th right. being our busiest day. So we would expect the call volume to start to trend up again. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for the executive director? All right, seeing none, thank you, Debbie. And next we have Deputy Director Scott Hamill with the support services update. Page 48. Thank you, Chair packet. Doerr. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you'll find my report on page 48. Wanted to start by highlighting that this is also National 911 Public Education Month. And so in addition to the uh, exciting and uh, really interactive messages from agencies that came through supporting our staff and showing appreciation, Intermixed, you'll find uh, education uh, on social media about out to the public about the, the services that we provide. Um, and then really from there, my focus today is to talk about the upcoming law enforcement RMS replacement project and to make sure that we sort of a, have a shared context. This is a, a project and a process that began actually back in 2018. South Sound 91 has been maintaining, managing, developing an in-house RMS system for over 20 years. And back in 2018, a consultant looked at kind of the, the state of the union. Where are we and what are the options that would make sense? And the options really were either hire uh, and onboard a lot more development staff in order to bring this in-house solution up to current standards for software uh, and make it compliant with Windows changes, all of that sort of thing. Um, or look at consumer off the shelf uh, products, solutions as, as an alternative. And in the end, it was, it was deemed that there was too much uncertainty, risk and potential cost increase to bring on the development staff and to do this in-house and that it made more sense to look at off the shelf. And so that began all the way back in 2018. There's been uh, various groups um, comprised of South Sound 911 staff as well as representatives of the customer law enforcement agencies uh, that have reviewed um, some of the, the solutions that are out there. And uh, ultimately, uh, the, the uh, evaluation committee, we have an RMS, there's so many acronyms, right? You're trying to keep up with the acronyms, I'm trying to keep up with the acronyms, and I work here. Uh, so <laughs> there, there was an RMS evaluation committee that was established. And uh, 
Motorola Premier One is the um, the the recommendation of that group uh, from a consensus basis as the most advantageous solution for uh, for the the agencies and South Sound 911 to be considering. And, and so in addition to looking back to 2018, this is a, a great time to kind of pause and, and express appreciation as well to the members of that evaluation committee and to all of the law enforcement agencies that sent representatives uh, in order to uh, view, give input, provide feedback on the, the possible solutions that were being considered. Uh, it has been a very collaborative process. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, our internal RMS program manager, Doug Bischoff, who wasn't able to be in attendance here this morning with meeting conflicts, but he had such a critical role facilitating uh, the, the review, the interaction with the vendors, taking what he knows and understands the law enforcement community to be saying the needs are, and then translating that from an IT perspective to talk with the vendors. Uh, and then also Assistant Director of Technical Services, Tim Hanna is here today. And he provided uh, leadership to this project. He helped manage, or really he was the, the focal manager of the contract negotiation process. Uh, and we also have representatives from Motorola with us today as well uh, to be here uh, as we present uh, this briefing to the board. Uh, so from there, I'll just pivot to the packet. I don't plan on walking through 100 pages of information with you this morning. I wanted to give you context for the material that's there case you do have questions uh, that, that come from that. So on page 49, Mot Motorola provided an executive summary document. Uh, and so that is there for, for context. And then on page 57, you, you might recall that we engaged with federal engineering as a consultant for the RFP process to help uh, determine the requirements, uh, formulate those into to actual textual requirements for the, for the process and then also helped to oversee the evaluation. They provided a report about the RFP process that uh, we took on as an endeavor. And then um, if you're interested, page 97 has uh, a bit of a flow chart of a timeline that we've been through from 2018 to present. But really, uh, if we get to the nitty gritty, that's on page 98. Uh, so on page 98, at the, the top of the page is a table, uh, which is meant to show that for an estimated five and a half million dollar project, uh, 2.25 million has, is already in a reserve fund. And an additional 2.25 million is needed between 25 and 26. Uh, and Chief Fisher, Fisher mentioned that information had been put out to the agencies about what those cost allocations would look like. Uh, and, and so we're, as Director Grady also said, engaged with, uh, with that group providing information, uh, and we meet with them tomorrow at the, the monthly Police Chiefs Association meeting. Uh, and also on page 98 in the bottom half of the page uh, is the milestone payment uh, process from the contract, which shows where the costs were derived from uh, in the table above. On Page 99 is the contract implementation costs on the top half of the page. You might note that it's $4.8 million on that page. And I just said five and a half million. Five and a half reflects contingency as well as tax. Um, and then on the bottom of page 99 shows what the costs would be beyond implementation. Implementation concludes in 2026. So then the table at the bottom of the page reflects 2027 through 2035 annual maintenance costs. Part of our recent process has been to brief out all of the stakeholder groups. There's a law enforcement uh, records management system committee that meets on a monthly basis. So we've had conversation with them. There's an LEOPC group. We met with them. And then we met with the PSCOC on Friday and then, as was said before, we meet with the Chiefs Association uh, again tomorrow. So there's uh, drinking from a fire hose, a quick rundown on where where we are. And with that, I'm, I'm available for any questions. Vice Chairman Hi, Scott. <laughs> so what is the cost of the program right now that we have? In 
And I guess I would reflect back to 2018 again. Uh, and in, in 2018, uh, as they recommended that we move from continuing to develop uh, a solution at a time when we had increased staff, uh, we had 13 on the, the team supporting that, that platform and the applications that relate to it. And that staff is reduced down. Uh, and so the, the cost... Uh, the cost today is is primarily in uh, maintaining hardware and then staff to maintain the system. Right. I guess what I'm getting to is this is a 10 year contract yes. that, we're, that we're getting ready to go to and it's almost $10 million. Yes. And does that reflect the 5.5? That's not part of it. So is that offset that 5.5? Does that offset part of the nine, nine, seven? Yes. Okay. So, so there's, I'm trying to get you to tell me there's cost effectiveness here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, so there's a, I, I'm I guess trying the way, to move you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I guess I would frame it this way. Um, there's a cliff coming and the, the cliff is that the current model won't continue to be sustainable and, and usable with windows. It won't be compatible. So the alternative paths were increase the costs of staff and hardware in order to develop and maintain in-house, which would have cost more than this alternative. So this alternative is the cost-effective solution. Which is the best solution. Yes. Ah, thank you. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Thanks, God. Sure. Appreciate it. I, sometimes it's hard for me to get the right. I appreciate right you leading the horse to water. Okay. <laughs> Any other question? Uh, Board Member Bushnell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for the presentation and uh, just really Big, big appreciation for all the work that went into this this group for for putting all this together. It's it, it looks like hours of evaluation um, and a lot of great criteria scores and stuff like that. Appreciate the vendors for taking the time to 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 try and um, you know uh, be a part of this process as well. Um, one of my questions is on the it looks like there is sub subscription based. Is that is that correct? I'm kind of looking at the support services annual pricing summary. So does that does does that subscription also include like additional backend support from Motorola uh, for uh, supporting our systems if there's like a hiccup or an issue that we might need extra technical expertise on? Uh, I'm going to turn to Assistant Director Tim Hanna <laughs> and ask him to join me to help answer that question. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, the years that you see the. The, the 10 years, that subscription price is is really the support. So it's, yes, hardware support, software support. We have our internal staff, but then we might raise issues to them when we experience bugs or something like that. So that price per year from year two to 10 is that software subscription support. Okay. And uh, in that subscription, if, if there's like radio or not radio, but like system upgrades, uh, would that also be included with that? That is well? part of that is part of the subscription uh, okay. service fees, and there is, I think, in uh, one of the years. Correct me if I'm wrong. There was also some hardware refresh. Okay, perfect. Um, I think uh, you know there's a lot of organizations that have moved to kind of uh, subscription based models, and I think it's uh, it you know it, it works because it continues to to provide extra layers of support on top of instead of just one time uh, purchases. So this is uh, I think prudent. So thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Yeah. Chair comments. Lucky for you, I don't have any. And we have no action items. Um, is there any other business or announcements to go to the order? Vice Chair McElligot. I would. Uh, I should have said this about the same time Board Member uh, Rumba was talking, but uh, the facilities maintenance staff as well as our administrative staff. I mean, I hate to say it, the only time you know Marlena's name is when things go bad, because that's when they go after and things don't work. And one of the things we got, I see she's got a bag sitting there that says chaos coordinator on it. Uh, so it's uh, that's pretty much what their job is. But I think though, the unsung heroes sometimes are the silly maintenance people. Because one of the things is, this meeting doesn't happen if the lights don't go. And all the things that happen here is things that we don't see, and it looks like it's seamless. And as uh, Director uh, Rumbaugh uh, mentioned, 
these are things that we take for granted that uh, actually wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for the great team we have. So uh, I think we also have to give credit to the executive director for good hires and make sure that uh, we continue to have people like Scott Hamill and Mark Mears and people like Hannah uh, in there uh, continuing to give us the support and the people that we need to uh, make this operation work. So thank you very much. Anybody else? All right, so Marlena, can you read your bag? It doesn't, it's not, and I, don't, I will say, I have never had to call Marlena because something was not working because the bag says it all. <laughs> the bag says chaos coordinator, someone who solves problems you never knew existed in ways that will blow your mind. See also ninja rock star legend. Yes, <laughs> that, Jamie and Marlena, that is how I sum you up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so next the board is going to move into executive session to discuss pending litigation pursuant to RCW 42.30.1101 I can't read today. Um <laughs> hold it up back out here. And performance of a public employee pursuant to RCW 42.30.1101G. Um anticipated we will go in for 25 minutes. No, Peter, do you have any action? No action expected, correct? No action ex expected on either one of them. So we'll we'll recess for five minutes for clear everybody to be able to leave and use the restroom before we start. Thanks.
Okay, we are out of the executive session with no action and the meeting is adjourned.